Welcome to Evenings in Elul. One of the themes of the High Holy Days is Teshuvah. Now, it's an interesting Hebrew word. It often is translated as uh, atonement. The Aseret Yumei Teshuvah are the uh, 10 days between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, and we call them the 10 days of penitence or repentance. But the word Teshuvah actually means returning. And the idea behind Teshuvah as a concept in Judaism is the recognition that even the most perfect human being is going to make a mistake at some point in their lives, is going to diverge uh, from the path that they are supposed to be on and make a wrong turning somewhere. And each of us knows, no matter how hard we've tried in the past year, that we've, there are things we could have done better. And there are moments where we turned off from the correct way of being and uh, just made a mistake or two and we're heading off in the wrong direction. It doesn't mean that we're the worst sinners in the world, but it simply means that we ought to recognize that we do have the capacity to be a little better than we were and a little better than we are and make our way back from whatever was that wrong turning back to the correct path. And that's the concept that really lies behind the whole of, um, of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, the Days of Atonement, the Aseret Yemei Teshuvah, the Ten Days of Returning. And the idea of returning is a very powerful one in uh, Judaism. And this is a poem that I wrote some 30 years ago. It was a series of poems that were composed for the High Holy Days, asking what people might achieve in the, in the coming year, or what, what stage of life they might go through. And this one, the returning one, was, was written for and delivered on uh, Kol Nidre on the evening, probably the holiest evening in the Jewish calendar. And I think in order to really appreciate it, you need to just think yourself into that Kol Nidre mode, which is why I started with the song from Barbara Streisand, I hope its sound is of reasonable quality, to get us in the mood for this evening's reading. And for all of those who will return in this year, return from a world filled with everyday cares of finance, employment, property and all we are carrying daily, those burdens we share common to us all. Return from a world of routine which weighs heavy, daily controlling, chasing privacy into dark corners and instants, only seldom discovered and rarely consoling, occasional solace. Return from a world of relationships struggle, tolerance strained by the actions of loved ones which tear at our patience, times when it would seem we shall never regain all the feelings we know we still hold for the ones in our lives who, like us, are burdened and worn by those same cares. Return from a world of silent despair, of moments when hope itself has been torn from the heart of our lives, when confronting the headlines of a world so unable to live with itself, with the pain that we daily inflict on our own through war or poor use of our planetary wealth, or reports of the danger, the violence, the greed, the casual cruelty daily inflicted by humans on humans, the hatred, the suffering, damage and pain, all the agony never depicted. Return from a world full of people and noises, which daily recalls isolation we feel in moments hardly seen, forgotten awareness of alienation so concrete and real. Return from the darkness of a world without God, from places our souls can no longer survive, in the emptiness we have created. No time to acknowledge we are but half alive as we race endless, helplessly, fill days and hours with all that's important, life's care and concern, which is all that we are, and without which we're naught, for it holds us together. But let us return from all that we are and endeavor while here to approach the potential of what we might be as we try once again to return in this year. Return to a place we've attended before, though perhaps since last year only rarely we've seen, 
and remark on the change in surroundings, but not in ourselves and the way we have been. Return on a day when we've often returned, but have left shortly after arriving, believing no food was sufficient endeavor and never possessing the stomach for striving demanded in prayers that await us this day. Return to the chance, the remote possibility of a real encounter, communion with God, with all its mystique, its impenetrability, yet available to us in here on this day. This great day whose conception we owe to ancestors, on whose words and whose visions our faith is constructed, and who with this chance of returning have blessed us and all who share our faith. Return to the one who cries out every year for our human assistance with divinely ordained task. Listen for the voice calling from beyond time, crying sharp from a distance. Return to me while still the moment is beckoning. Return in your thoughts and in all that you do. Open your hearts to reveal destinations long hidden. Return to me that I may return unto you. And what is this returning to which we are bidden? This evening, this day, which confronts us with words and with songs and with prayers, which, unless understood, might as well be left unsung, unspoken, unheard, both by us and by God, who has hope of far more. Behold, as we stand at this evening's fall, confronting the one who demands we admit we have sinned, Opportunity beckons us all and tells us to look far beyond what we're reading and feeling and praying. This day exists not just to tell us we're awful and do only wrong. It beseeches us. See the potential we've got to improve. The words in our prayer book tell us we have done wrong and we should be contrite. But were we to leave here with only reminders of weakness and failure, this would not be right though this must be acknowledged. Atonement would fail if we carry such feelings departing from here. There is more than this, far more, in waiting for those who succeed in their quest to return in this year. Let us hearken once more and pay heed to the voice that will carry once more for us the message of true repentance. Let us hear as God calls once again, return to me, that I may return unto you. Return to me that I may return unto you. These are words that are ours on this awesome day, as God stretches to reach us, to beckon us close. But how shall we start, begin making our way on this undefined journey, impossible course, whose direction is shrouded in mysteries dark overhanging? How shall we return, we who burdened with struggles, know not where to start, our travel, and still less where it leads. But we answered the call, else we would not be here. And so whether from habit or duty or hope, we may be among those who return in this year. Return to a God who is present in all that we are, and in all that we do and believe, in the colours of sunsets, the eyes of a child, in all that we yearn for, whether we achieve or we fail in meetings of minds and of hearts, in music and melody, silence, and words of love and of truth. Return to God dwelling in all we shall hear and have already heard. Return to a God whose presence is also in busy streets, crowded with jostling and striding of those who are journeying hastily on with their lives, which continue without coinciding with the one who wait patiently for their return, haunting moments of doubt or of anguish, and who whisper silently, waiting for us to acknowledge. Return to me, that I may return unto you. And the way to return, to embark and discover the truth of a God who waits only for us, to recognize beauty in everyday encounter, to go out in the world not with fear, but with trust, and to greet waking instants each day with new hope. In 24 hours we shall leave from here, to return to our homes, to our lives as they were. But those of us who truly return in this year will carry there with us a whisper of God, encountered in moments of this awesome day we now begin. 
in a moment of silence or prayer or music. There is none who can say how the whisper will touch us and enter our souls, but touch us it can. And should we but allow it to speak to us gently, our lives, now enriched, could begin anew. Let us feel benefit from accepting the call that encircles us now and cries out to everyone gathered in here. Return to me that I may return unto you. Let it be us who return in this year. Yes, let it be us who return in this year. Return to the cares and the burdens we share, to the daily routine, denying us privacy, to uncertain emotion for those who we care for and who care still for us. Return to a world ever torn by its pain that won't lessen this year. Return to the hostile, the people, the noises, but remember that we are returning from here from a place, an encounter, a momentary glimpse of a whisper stretched out as we see this day through, calling into the darkness that lurks in our world, crying, return to me, that I may return unto you. The difficult task that now stretches before us lies not in endurance to master this day and acknowledge our frailty, weakness and sin till the close of Na'ila, then wander away to return to what we were. That is not what is asked. This is not what we seek when we seek to Shuva. Let us hear what is spoken and also returning, so that when we return to the people we are and the lives we must lead, let us deep down acknowledge and recognize that in the heart of all things there waits opportunity for an encounter with God with ourselves. This acknowledgement brings a new depth to our lives with the realization that through all the hustle, the pain, the despair of the world we return to, the alienation, the silence, the loneliness, someone is there to console and to comfort, to soften and ease the concerns which might otherwise break us with sheer weight and pressure. This hope awaits beckons and welcomes all those of us who will return in this year. Ashivenu Adonai Elecha Venashu Kadesh Yamenu Kakesh